And now we have a talk about the five steps to thrive in the open economy with uh, Marcelio Oliveira, co-founder and chief growth officer of Sensedia. Hello, Marcelio. Hi, Majid. How are you? How are you? So it's a real office behind you? Um, I'm good. You're, you're, you're back in the real office. So yeah, yeah, please share your slides with us. And yes, and we'd love to hear more about the five steps to thrive in the open economy. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's, a, it's a, always a pleasure to, to enjoy those guys from API days all around the world. Yes, I'm on the office, but we are running now. It's just a few people here. We are looking, looking forward to return from the next year, maybe. Let's see. Um, hi, everyone. It's a huge pleasure to share some the next that to stay next minutes with you. I'm Marcelo, I'm a co-founder from, from Cecilia. Uh, in the last years, we have worked with different companies, helping discuss these companies, big companies to be more digital, to be more pluggable, to be more fast in digital innovation. Uh, and on the next three years, uh, we have observed a lot of financial services companies running through a, looking for an open economy uh, from open banking, open insurance, etc. So uh, we, we could observe from different perspectives uh, that we can use some lesson learned from this, these companies. Uh, and to be more pragmatic, we, I will show five steps that almost every really good success stories uh, used to, to treat the open economy. Okay, just to, to present very fast, Cecilia, it's a global company, leader in Forrester Wave, in API strategy and delivery services provided. So uh, Cecilia provides an innovative and global solution, and this solution is composed by uh, an API, full lifecycle and modern integration platform, and specialized services to help these companies on the playbook to run. It's not, not, not the, just uh, a platform, but the, all the acknowledgement and skills about open economy, um, design, security, uh, non-functional issues, okay? Let's let's run for uh, we are looking for here in the stage. Uh, so we to be more uh, conservative and pregnant. We just I bring uh, five pragmatic steps to unlock open finance with APIs to thrill the open economy. Uh, conceptually unlock the backend. That's number two. Reform and review your architectural strategy, uh, thinking as a platform solution, consider API care and developer experience seriously. It's a very relevant question about the success stories in open finance success stories. And at the end, thinking in a strategy and API playbooks. So uh, I will, going deeper for the, this, this point on the next minute, minute, uh, minutes uh, to have more details and try to use some real stories to illustrate these this points. Uh, and please, if you have the questions, take notes. I'm sure you have time to, to talk about this now or later, okay? Uh, when I'm talking about the, the unlocking backend, uh, and the fact is we are finding or facing the same challenge in different business. It's about how can I expose my legacy to be more pluggable, to be more accessible for my data, unlock your data. Uh, we have a lot of problems for agility, security, scalability. It's very limited from the old legacies. Um, complex legacy systems, and we are looking for to be more integrated as a partner program, uh, to be ready to launch new digital products faster, 
to think make my APIs as a product innovation. So it's a, a really, really nice dream to understand how can I support the partner integration easily, new digital products, API as a product and innovation. And we are sure we need a very hard and serious modern integration strategy using uh, some platform. Uh, every good success stories from open economy, open banking, open finance, open health, feed bank as a service uh, marketplace, they are using a modern integration platform or this concept for this. Four, four uh, examples that we are uh, facing and Sensija has helped some companies to, to, to achieve this, unlock the back end. Uh, in Latin America, it's a very relevant 100% digital bank called the Original Bank. They launched a bank as a service, uh, achieving more than three four, to four million end customers through partners uh, using the services the banking services, exposing and digital services. New digital products, other financial services, it's a Tribunco. Uh, Tribunco has launched a uh, new solution, new uh, uh, juridic cards for payment uh, with a, a between two or three months for created and launched a digital product because all the legacy was totally pluggable through a modern integration platform. Uh, other bank stories, Banco Topazio, they launched some products as an API, positioned themselves as a bank of service. Uh, Topazio has launched a low product for a fintech network, and they moved from 200 contracts signed per month to 16 thousand contract signs per month, uh, move, changing totally the position from the banks. And the last one is Cielo. It's a POS, a payment machine, the biggest one from, from, from Latin America. They launched a smart POS running totally based in, in, on APIs and with open APIs. And you can develop a app to run on this POS from restaurants, and bars, etc., uh, parking parking lots. So uh, they have more two hundred apps running in Cielo machine, and not a single one was developed by Cielo. Ever developed uh, apps was developed by the partners the partners uh, network from from Cielo. Uh, so, so many stories, but I, I just bring this forward for, for illustrate the relevance to keep your legacy running in a safe way, but totally provable. The second point is about you need to put your architectural strategy on the hurt from digital strategy uh, with different approaches, but it's very important to look for your architecture, not just an integration layer, but it's a very uh, strategic, and sometimes business layers. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and here I bring the concept from composable business architecture. It's, a, it's becoming very relevant, the composable business or composable architecture. But at the end, it's a similar and evolve uh, challenge for transform your monolithic application to services and products for end partners or end, end customers. Uh, looking for the concept from composable business architecture, the point is looking for our, your uh, business functions as a PBC, packaged business capabilities. It's at the end, it's a building blocks developed as microservices with an independent approach and it available through APIs. The main difference is it's not about just microservices or just APIs. It's a business, a, a packaged business capability developed and evolved in, as a microservices. These microservices was exposed as API and can be composed to launch faster and very easy to evolve new products. Uh, 
and these points will have new relevance, additional skills that you, is, will be necessary. Like we need to, to have a product mindset for APIs, adaptive governance, uh, to understand about mesh architecture from microservices. We need to structure a playbook to define about how API are going to be open and how to uh, still be restricted APIs. But at the end, it's how I can decompose my monolith application using microservices as a package business capability to expose and to compose in different kind of business need. Uh, we have we have a, a nice story about this. It's a, a brand here in, uh, called Elo. Elo it's a, a, a card card uh, payment card flag like Mastercard and Visa more than. 140 million cards uh, issued and uh, they created a developer portal solution using APIs and expose and they are, are reviewing the monolith developing using microservices in a composable business approach uh, they are leaders in anti-fraud solution so they decompose the monolith and fraud systems in microservices and these microservices uh, was composed in new and fraud solution delivered as APIs. Now they are able to expose for a different kind of customers and to be more performatic. The results, they increased 15 times the performance for processment and they are now enabling different kind and multiple integration partners. So it a, was a chain game to position the old and fraud monolith system to a new approach from uh, provability. Yeah. Uh, it's very similar to open banking challenge. We need to open, uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship between banking and APIs to one-to-many relationship banking for different kinds of digital partners. So once you unlock your legacy, we can plug different solutions in your legacy. We can evolve your architecture. It's necessary to think about strategy and how you can position ourselves as a platform. It's not just an app provider. This is a, the, the main difference. Uh, I, I, I like to use this, uh, the concept from Gartner from different three, three styles or three uh, kinds of digital platform entry points. Uh, no matter is like what kind of business you are running in, uh, what kind of architecture you are looking for, we need to think about platform and you need to decide, I will be just an internal platform, I use my technology to expose APIs to use for internal uh, systems or to restrict the APIs to a very uh, few number of, of partners or I can position myself and my solution as a public APIs. Just take some names. Uh, when I'm thinking about internal platform, we're looking for, for instance, Netflix. Netflix has a, uh, hundreds of apps running uh, using the API from Netflix, but every single one was developed by Netflix. It's a totally internal use from APIs. There is no uh, open portal from APIs and Netflix. Amazon has a lot of partners using API from Amazon Marketplace, but it's a, it's a restricted use just for for some different kind of, of stories. Uh, at the end, we can position ourselves as a public APIs, like Uber, we can use APIs to develop a new solution to inter integrate, to be integrated together. Uh, bring for some customers from Syncedia, we have different customers position themselves uh, in the internal way, like Natura, Bayer, uh, McDonald's or McDonough, uh, different kind of, of companies that are using a lot the platform positioning, but just to evolve their own uh, application. Uh, on the mid tier, we have a restricted APIs, uh, some insurance companies, bankings, exposing APIs for a specific number of specific partners. And other ones, on the other hand, have some customers open totally public APIs to be more innovative, to create new products, to launch new products. To, to a chain of, of new customers position themselves as a platform, yeah. So I, I really like this quote from Kotler. Uh, they thought that the competition is not only between companies, it's between business ecosystems. 
this will be just the change game uh, in fact number four consider api care and developer experience seriously if you have a good architecture your legacy running well you have a platform position probably you have a lot of companies using your apis this is a good point but it's a very 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 dangerous point because you need to improve the developer experience how the companies are looking for or onboarding in a platform and how you you care from your ecosystems so uh, ecosystems it's one of key points from digital business technology platform coding partner so some questions got apis now what how to attract and engage partners how to support and onboard developers and partners uh, the documentation for apis are up to date it's enough uh, it's there on ask questions, support, uh, I need to, to run and troubleshoot. How can I communicate and engage uh, about change evolution from the APIs? So it's very relevant questions that you need to, to understand. Uh, and we call this as a developer experience process. Since it has a developer process and we provide for our customers developer experience initiative to remove the best experience for your partners' ecosystems through APIs, self-services, access control, onboarding, the sandbox, code examples as the case, on a dev way vision. So it's very important because we, we are not looking for a nice secret. We are looking for a very, very um, popular API movement. So it's important to take care of developing ecosystems. And if you have a good ecosystems, you need to take care of this. So we have an API care solution to service level agreements to, the, to, to monitor your, your partner chain, uh, to understand the issues, to be proactive uh, about performance, about functionalities. Uh, you need to use a different kind of dashboard of, uh, alerts from API operations. Um, and at the end, if you are operating, use a strategy of lessons learned for other strategies. Okay. A different financial companies are under pressures by new technologies like APIs, cloud, blockchain. New regulations in some countries like PST2, CMA, API, different countries. New expectations for use for digital users and a very new competitors: Google, Alibaba, Facebook, other tech giants, giants, etc. Uh, so it's a uh, it's a relevant move. Yeah, open banking it's it's a new big wave in different ways for different countries. Uh, some regulations, other not without regulation, but a relevant movement. Sensidia has developed a playbook for open data strategy, open trade strategy, open finance strategy, with how can I design the APIs to security, to evolve, how we create the API governance process, the developer engagement, developer experience. So it's a playbook for a lot of lessons learned to be used for, for customers that are looking for, not to expose API, but to change the game, to open, uh, new ways of revenue etc and the financial service solution it's a next level pro for api management it's not a api management but with uh, constant management uh, regulations connectors ready uh, designs ready for uh, regulation from financial open finance this is the perfect combining that we believe that can help the companies and everyone has using not just a API platform, but an open finance platform solution. Uh, so, every very good stories, we observed that they unlocked the legacy, unlocked the backend, reformed the architectural view, thinking the platform, thinking as a platform, a running in an API care and developer experience approach, and using API playbooks to run in a success. Uh, journey. Just to add, since TJ is a global solution uh, with a modern integration platform, a full API lifecycle SaaS platform running in different countries, different customers, 
uh, to solve problems from APIs, microservices, governance, service mesh, connectors, flexible actions, and a very specialized architectural consulting services to help them to achieve an open banking success, business architecture, the developer experience, skills, uh, and different kind of, of challenges running around this modern integration view. Um, it's an innovative and complete solution with an API modern integration platform and specialized services. Uh, so it's a, if you are serious about API economy, uh, if you are serious about open financing, look for API as a marathon, a strategic marathon. It's not just about a fast sprint. Uh, you can take a picture or just look for this, this QR code. Uh, this is bring you for a link to can talk with me later or now. I believe you have a few minutes to run now. Yeah, Mark Silio, thank you very much. Uh, we have a question. How long in a big organization these five steps will, would take? Yes, uh, we need to think as a small waves. Uh, since CJ has used it as a sprint to unlock, we are not unlocking all the legacy, all the backend, we are unlocking a part of the legacy. So look for a strategy, unlock the legacy, rethink your architecture, expose APIs. We are looking for uh, a monthly review and a six month project to have uh, the first projects running in an open view. Uh, depending on the strategy, we need to use the second wave, the third wave, the fourth wave, but uh, we are able to run fast to deploy the platform, to, to use the approach in monthly reviews, and uh, the main way are using four to six months to have the developer experience running with the first APIs and partners. Uh, the go live is between four and six months. So the time to the the time to from zero to one about the value it's uh, uh, for uh, four to six months. Uh, who yes. should be the sponsors to accelerate the the, the five Perfect. steps you share? Perfect. We are thinking about a strategy, Maisie. So uh, um, we observe that the architectural managers is the enabler, is the guy that challenges, but the CIO and the CDO, the digital officer. Uh, the architectural managers is the guy that is mounting the play board, the playground from digital guys. Why I'm not just thinking about CIO? Because CIO looking for strategy, etc. But the guy that run and solve the problem and to put architectural in a strategic table on the, the, the company will be the architectural manager or architectural executive. In some comp in companies, we already have the director from architecture in an executive view or the CIO. Yeah, last question here. Can we operate the, these five steps that you share in a bimodal IT uh, in a bimodal IT strategy? You know, my, managing the old and the new in the same time. Perfect. Yes, we need to do that because uh, we need to run the business while we are rethinking some part of business. So uh, I don't I don't believe that the bimodal is the end state, but this is a journey. At the end stage, you will need to move for 100% digital. But while we are rethinking our platform, you need to, to decide about what strategy are you running and new product. Okay, let's look for this kind of new product. What kind of what part of legacy I need to expose? What kind of control I need to have? What playbook are you use? The business model I export done. Let's move. Your your you you is is perfect. Uh, the buy model is the way to run this strategy faster. Yeah, and let's remind that the legacy software is the software that works, and that the, and that uh, that actually uh, pays all the employees, right? <laughs> so exactly, yeah. exactly. It's not yeah. a pejorative view. It's just this is was not developed to run what we're looking to run now, but they're sustaining the company. Yeah, uh, but uh, sometimes new technology needs to make the, the interest rate of maintenance logo lower, uh, you know, by uh, rebuying kind of the technical debt. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Marcelio. We reached uh, our 25 minutes. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I think, insightful. And what I remind, four to six months in 
uh, in sprint of one month for every um, in, in enlarging circles, right? Enlarging circles. Yes, yes. Have Very quick wins, be faster, think big. Thank you.